My wife and I are filmmakers, storytellers, really. We travel to many parts of the world, capturing the drama of life as it plays out on the global stage. Oh, and we also like to farm. We love how the farm connects us to the simple, yet profound journey from seed to sustenance. In a very real way, these vegetables sustain us and give us life. Much like how a simple story unlocks something deep in our imagination, where the life journey of another feeds and nourishes our soul. This documentary isn't a searing intellectual expose. It's, it's not hard-edged journalism. It's just a love story. It traces a pathway to where life intersects destiny, where heartbeats synchronize, even though worlds apart, where we learn that the best stories in the world always teach us about love, because it's only through love that we encounter the miraculous. The story started about three years ago when some good friends of ours, Nate and Jen Lasur, decided they were going to adopt a little girl from China. I had worked in Chinese adoption for a number of years and it was just a remarkable experience. So with that in mind, we decided to create a short film about the beautiful experience of adoption. Before they left, we gave them some pointers on how to shoot some footage that we could use in the film. Then after they returned, we sat down with them and they told us their story. Well, Nate and I have both. Yeah, sorry. No, sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you hit the button. He, did he say go? Okay. Stand by. Okay, action. Finally, I think the fourth time or so, yeah. uh, we yeah, got the video her. camera on, and, and, and Jen kept in. nudging me, saying, you know, make sure you have it on, make sure it's ready, make sure it's on. And we, and we had it on, and, and there she July 2012 and the Olympics were happening everyone was excited and, and watching news on TV and, and uh, there's a really really bad flood that had happened in Beijing that a lot of people didn't realize because of all the publicity with the Olympics and the tragic thing about it was that it, it pretty much destroyed an orphanage um, that's sponsored by a local adoption agency. 
Years ago, Living Hope Adoption Agency, which is based in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania, opened Fang Shan Training Center right outside of Beijing to support orphan children. I had been to that orphanage um, the prior year to help out for, for a week. And I knew the kids, knew some of the kids there and, and knew some of the uh, nannies. Mike was suggesting that I fly out with him so we could capture some footage to help tell the story so people could donate toward the training center. There was also an, an underlying reason for an interest to in going back with David. For about a year or two prior to that, uh, David and I had discussions about the, the IEs, the foster mothers, the foster families that um, had taken care of adopted children, like my daughter, for the first 15 months of her life. You know, you have women that, that love these kids like mothers, and one day, the foster mother, the IEs, have to say goodbye. And it's just, to me, it was heartbreaking. We approached Living Hope Adoption Agency, and they commissioned us to create two short films about their work with these children in Beijing. Also, after lengthy discussions, we decided to create a long-form documentary about these IEs and these foster families, and also investigate something we knew very little about, and that was the finding place. Not many people have the opportunity of getting to go to their finding place. Nate and Jen told us that their good friends, the Winsels, were able to visit their daughter's finding place while they were in China. We were able to interview them, and they told us their story. I remember, you know, driving, you know, in the van as we were approaching, you know, just taking it in, like, is it going to be here or is it there? And uh, we eventually turned down this, you know, narrow alley, and we started to drive, you know, towards her finding spot. And when we got to the gate, you know, our guy just turned around and said, this is where it was. It was really hard just knowing that. Yeah. yeah I think it was, it was challenging because, you know, you, you think of a mother that had to, to leave her child there. And, um, you know, you try to process that and just think about what she went through. She obviously cared for her because she left her with a blanket. She left her with formula. So we know she cared for her. This interview convinced us we were headed in the right direction. She was found at 7.30 in the morning. He remembered, you know, finding her. I think he was just happy to see, you know, she had a family. The finding place is the location where, for a variety of reasons, Chinese mothers and fathers leave their children a place that holds tremendous significance for many adopting families. This human drama is taking place every day in China, and we wanted to explore it more. We asked Nate and Jen about Haley's finding place, and they expressed to us that they were really disappointed that when they were there to adopt her, they didn't get a chance to visit it. They decided that Jen would go with us and that we would feature their family in our film. When we were there a year ago, we really wanted to be able to go to her finding place and just be able to experience where her mother had to leave her. And um, we did not get to do that. So we are so excited to, you know, that I will have this opportunity to go and see where her mother had to leave her that day. The other thing we're going to be able to do is be able to go back to her orphanage and I'll get to see where she grew up for the first two and a half years of her life. By now, Mike and I had bought tickets for a December trip to China, but we continued to look for families to feature in our film. We had heard about an agency called CCAI Adoption Services. On their website, I noticed a family videos tab. The first one I clicked on started a rather epic domino effect. She, she, they really need a family, Lee, Lee, Lee. And we were thinking maybe we, 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 we could add them to our family tree, 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 tree. Yeah, yeah, cause we go on and on and on. Yeah, we go on and on and on. Yeah, we throw our hands up in the air sometimes. I remember thinking this family is perfect. They're energetic, creative, fun, and, and, and too many to count. If we could get them in our film, it would be outstanding.
we got to move. So I got their email off their blog and quickly composed an email to Christiane, the mom of this adorable bunch. I sent the email around 2 p.m. seeing if they would have interest in being in our film and by 3 o'clock Christiane had responded back saying, absolutely. We are committed to sharing about adoption any time we get the chance. Our daughter Gracie was adopted five years ago at the age of nine. Prior to us adopting her, she had lived for four years with a wonderful foster family. They are seriously the best people. And believe it or not, they were supposed to be in China adopting Callie, the 12-year-old girl in the video, about the same time we were planning to be there. And Gracie was going with them. Usually a couple kids want whatever's on the school lunch menu that day, so I usually make probably four or five. I try to remember what everybody likes. Uh, Taylor, his favorite is tuna fish on wheat. Gracie won't touch tuna fish. She loves peanut butter. She used to like it on white, but I found out this morning that she now likes it better on wheat. So I got in trouble for making it on white. Parker wanted a bagel with cream cheese. Lots of different orders. I got to remember which flavor of yogurt they like, which flavor of pudding they like, which vegetables they like. Taylor loves carrots. Xander doesn't. Lexi loves carrots cooked, but not raw. It's cold. Gracie won't eat apples, but she loves oranges. Of course, you're always rushed because there's always something else to do in the morning, and I never get up quite as early as I should. At this point in our story. Jeremy and Christiane have eight children. Gracie, Taylor, Parker, Jesse, Ellie, Lexi, Xander, and Sophie. After having three biological children, Christiane developed a health challenge that led to the miscarriage of her next two children. At this point, they began to think about adoption. After those two babies were born, we knew that we wanted more children still. We were devastated. But we started really praying about what to do next, and we felt led to adoption. And we thought about domestic and international, prayed about different countries, and our hearts just kept being brought back to China. People ask, why, why did you adopt from China? The best answer is that's where our children were. We feel like we've been led to the right children for our family. All five of the Greens' adopted children have special needs. It certainly presents challenges, but they've also seen their lives enriched in unexpected ways. Well, I think children with special needs have a special light about them and special spirit about them. And Jeremy and I were just talking about how they attract really good people. They attract the best kind of people. And so having them in our home has um, helped us meet wonderful people and has opened up just our circle of friends to the most amazing, wonderful, caring group of people that maybe we otherwise wouldn't have been close to. But they are, they're extremely special. They help you keep perspective on what's important in life. If you're ever discouraged or having a really hard day, in fact, just a couple days ago, I you know, locked myself in my closet. It had been a really hard day <laughs> and my house was a mess and I had so many things on my to-do list and I was just discouraged and I knelt down and said a prayer and the thought that came into my mind was you have arms and I thought oh Sophie when she's a mom and she has a messy house because we all will it's a lot hard for her to take care of the things that are just the day-to-day -day tasks Sophie occasionally she'll say I can't I don't have arms and that'll break your heart and um, Lexi occasionally We'll, we'll say it's not fair. Yeah. She just says, Mom, I want to see it's not fair. I don't like blind. I don't, I don't like want blind. blind. Mm -hmm. And so there are poignant, poignant moments. But for the most part, they just move along like the rest of us and, and do everything that we do. And to watch them and to see that is such an amazing perspective. And, and to see our other children who don't have some of the severe physical 
limitations. Just jump right in when help is needed uh, has been a tremendous growing experience for us as well to, to see their growth and their understanding and compassion. When you see her falling, be her solid ground. Hold her when she needs you, but don't hang on too tight. And when her wings are ready, let your angel fly. A lot of people ask, well, you guys just must be so organized and have everything just put together. And no, not at all. We are very much fly by the seat of our pants people, both of us. We love to do things on the spur of the moment. We have a lot of fun that way. But uh, yeah, sometimes it can be chaotic. And our rule is we get done what we have to get done. Okay, let's go check out. <laughs> if anything else gets done, it's a bonus. Yeah, I pretty much wanted to be adopted by the Green family. We spent hours talking with Jeremy and Christiane about the kids, and Gracie in particular. We discussed visiting her finding place and her foster family who live right outside of Shanghai. She was five years old when she was found. She had a note in her pocket with her birth date, and she had seven yuan, which is about a dollar. And, um, she was brought to the orphanage. They said she was very sweet, but really scared. And because of her heart condition, <clears throat> she only spent about a month there. And they decided she needed to be in a family that could take better care of her. And that's when she went to live with, we call them China Mom and China Dad. And they are the most wonderful, special people in the world. And she was with them for four years. We had in mind a much different girl than we got. From her pictures and everything, we just, we had this vision of this girl that was kind of reserved and, and that's not our Gracie. She walked in the room with full of spirit and spunk. <laughs> so grateful for my Gracie. She's really, really special and wonderful. And I love her so much. On our adoption trips since we've adopted Gracie, so this is our third trip since then, we've always had this opportunity to visit with her foster family and spend a couple of days here and take some time with them. The trips with them have always been wonderful. They seem to keep getting better and better each time we come as we get more comfortable with them, they're more comfortable with us. At this point, I really feel like it's a, a second family that we have here in, in China, and it's an extended family as well. It's wonderful. Every time we come back with her, they are so grateful and gracious to us and so sweet, but just tears will just come down China Mom's face and she'll say, thank you for bringing her back. And thank you for letting me see her again. And we just feel so grateful that she had such a loving family for so long. 
there couldn't be better people on the whole earth than them. They truly just love her. And you can see it in the way that they act towards her and they constantly express appreciation to us for helping her and she's so much healthier than she was when she was here simply because of the surgeries. Uh, but, but they're very happy that they see a little more meat on her bones and they'll squeeze her arms and her cheeks and, and, and give us a thumbs up and say, you know, good job. China Grandma has just been loving and accepting of our whole family ever since we first came. She was excited to have Jessica sit on her lap on this, this little ride. She, she loves Jessie. She's just one of the sweetest people we've ever met. You could just tell they really went all out to, to really make it a wonderful and special experience for Gracie. And, and you can tell that whenever Gracie comes to town, it's a holiday for their family. It's, it's Gracie Day. Watching these two families so openly share and love on Gracie was a rich experience. For me, it was a snapshot, a fleeting glimpse into what the world could look like if our first priority was to love every child as our own. So my understanding of that day all that I have heard from Gracie is she remembers being at the bus stop with her dad and then turning around and, and he wasn't there. She and said she remembers him pointing out, look at the, look at those birds over there, look at that tree. He was pointing out different things. Then she went to look at something and turned back and he was, he was gone. When we first met Gracie, she had the impression that um, her parents hadn't wanted her. That was what had developed in her mind. And we have talked to her and helped her see that that's not the case. That they loved her very, very much. And I'm sure they knew that she was dying. And they had no way of helping her. And the only thing they could do to save her life was to, to leave her there and to be taken to an orphanage and eventually adopted in a place where the medical care was sufficient. I wish that we had a way of communicating with them. I hope that somehow, someday, they see this documentary and they see their beautiful little girl. When we got her here, the doctors didn't know how well things would go. After she had her surgeries, they still didn't know. She was on oxygen. All the time she was at home, she was supposed to be on oxygen. They told her that, they told us that that would continue to uh, worsen, <clears throat> that eventually she'd be on oxygen all the time and she would continue to deteriorate until she just got too sick. And a year or so ago, a miracle happened. And we took her to the doctor, and they were shocked. They went and did a diagnostic cath, and they were just shocked at the pressures that were there. They were way lower than they had anticipated. They took her completely off of oxygen. She's on one pill, and is supposed to see the doctor once a year, and has the potential to have a, a, a normal lifespan. And so I really truly do hope that, that somehow, someday, her biological parents can know the miracle that they performed in her life by giving her this opportunity. And how grateful we are that they did that. One of the most beautiful acts of love that we are aware of happened to their
sacred place. It's where something really beautiful and selfless happened. I'm sure a father's heart was ripped out. And, and yet, he did it because there was enough love for her. Looking at her, you can see how she would generate that kind of love. After a short flight to Xi'an, we were about to enjoy a bonus feature of this trip and document the Greens' adoption day of Cali. Are we being recorded right now? Probably. I'm missing my kids and my curling iron. <laughs> <laughs> Going to get Cali girl. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a child that has relationships and is 12 years old and we're going to want to hug her and, and hold her and, and, and you know call her our daughter and say you know, I, in Chinese I'll say I'm your daddy and this is your mommy and Jesse. Jesse, say hi. <laughs> I'm Gracie. What's your papa? That's your mama. In Chinese, I'll say I'm your daddy and this is your mommy. And hopefully, uh, she will accept that quickly and, and feel good about it. Oh. Callie on. Callie is a true orphan. She has lost both parents. Her dad was killed in a coal mining accident, her mother died um, shortly thereafter, and so she has biological grandparents who just couldn't afford to take care of her, but they love her a lot, and they, she's been able to visit with them, but they just don't have the capacity, especially when she's in a wheelchair, to take care of her. It was time for Mike and me to say goodbye to the Greens and head to Beijing to accomplish more filming. But before we left, we were able to visit the main government orphanage in Xi'an. It was there that we met the Adoption Services Director. Hello, my name is Rihanna. I'm working in this orphanage almost five years, and I have a seven years old son. My husband is from India, and my mom worked here over 20 years. She was a director here. And last year she retired. I, I, I studied in Switzerland for the hotel management, but I grew up with all these children. So I like to work here to help them. My main job is doing adoption to find a, a family for the children who is living in this orphanage. One year we prepare the papers uh, for the children, maybe like 80, 90 children. We have four, around 400 children living in this orphanage now, in this uh, pink building under the 10th floor foster, foster family buildings. Outside in the village, we have 300 children live with the village foster parents. And we have now with a project with the half of the Sky Foundation, we call Little Sister Project and the Grandma Project. Half the Sky Foundation is a rather remarkable organization that is having a marked impact in hundreds of orphanages throughout China. Rihanna went on to tell us about the foster families that live right there on the orphanage campus. And the foster family uh, in that yellow building have 28 couples inside. One family have like four or five special needs children living there. So daytime they are coming here to this uh, pink castle building for doing a class. The so lunchtime and the night they will stay with their parents in the home. These children have no parents. We feel sympathy toward each of them. We want to be their family. 
It was great to see that even though these children were in a large institutional orphanage, they were being loved and cared for in families. One thing I didn't mention is that the Greens' in-country guide, Sherry, told us about a little girl at the Xi'an orphanage that was about to be adopted, but then the family changed their minds. And this was just a couple days before. So we told Rihanna that we'd be willing to make a short film and help her find a family. We met Chu Yin. Yeah, when we saw this little girl, uh, Chu Yen, I mean, she just looked so sad. Looking at her, you know, and just, just hoping that we could do something. You know, so David, David did a, some video footage and, you know, did his thing, and, and I kept keeping a look at my watch to make sure we got to the train on time. And, and um, you know, we, we did the video and, you know, said goodbye to Rihanna and, I mean, I had no idea what was ahead. Yeah. Uh, what, what I have to say? This, this story Just tell of, the story, if you would, about that she was about to be adopted and they saw the video and decided not to. Oh. Yeah, can, yeah. Can we, uh, can we turn the TV down? Okay. <laughs> The, the, uh, actually, there was one family interest to. Uh, you can just talk right into the lens here. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was December 17th, and my girlfriend called on the phone. I was out in the dining room working on adoption paperwork, and she's like, You gotta go turn on Facebook, you gotta see this video clip. Well, when she brought me called me to the computer, and this is not the first time I've been called to the computer to look <laughs> at something on the internet or a video or something. But, um, so, I, you know, I was prepared. My guard was up to say, well, this is not quite the process that we were thinking here. You oh, know, yeah, you would we want to stick with the process. through the steps. While Mike and I were in Xi'an, we visited a large government-run orphanage. We were given a wonderful tour of the facility by Rihanna, who oversees all the adoptions for the 700-plus children that she desperately wants to place in loving families. On the tour, we were introduced to perhaps the saddest little girl I've ever seen. One, one family was interested about uh, to take her uh, to adopt her, her, but after they see the video uh, of her, they they reject to adopt her. So we we wish some family can adopt her, give her a family, because he she's really a good girl. She need uh, more care. Oh, uh, her leg is uh, one leg is shorter, but if you hold her hand, she can walk. She slowly she can walk. Uh, My guard was up when also. I looked at the video, but um, I still remember um, getting to the end of that video, and this little girl just was waving. We can help your adoption agency get in touch with the orphanage. And just um, I just, just still remember. I think it felt like she was waving at me. But I, I'm pretty good at dismissing those things as well. So I say, how can God connect that one child to us? I didn't believe at that time it would happen, but I was certainly willing to pursue that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I w I didn't even necessarily believe, but I thought, okay, well, we'll we'll check into it. I can honestly say that adoptive families are some of the most amazing people on the face of the earth, and the Zimmermans are no different. They have five biological children: Lindsay, Brittany, Curtis, Emily, and Carter. They fostered, then formally adopted, half-brothers Caden and John Merle. That left plenty of room in their hearts to adopt. For a lot of families hoping to adopt, finances can often be one of the biggest challenges they face. So many of them have fundraisers. So we came across this puzzle idea, um, inviting others to be a piece of the puzzle and helping to bring her home. Mm. 
So my dear cousin Jennifer is wonderful at graphics and things and she helped to take the picture that we had, a still picture of her, and kind of create a puzzle. And our big fundraiser was launched on March 9th, a 750 piece puzzle. And then what we're gonna do is when the puzzle is complete, each person that was a piece of that puzzle name will be written on the back. And so we will put it in a hanging frame that is two-sided that will have her picture, her completed puzzle on one side and on the back will be everybody who loved her enough and sponsored her to be a part of her to be puzzle. a part of her and then we're going to display it in her home so it'll be very mm -hmm. special for her, for us yeah. and for those who were a part of her adoption journey. When we went on a family vacation that we had stayed for for 10 years in Florida, we are leaving the airport going to our rental house and I get a call from our social worker and she said, we have Little Miss So Sad's file because we were finally calling her Little Miss So Sad because I couldn't pronounce her Chinese name. She and was she so just looked, sad. And, and yeah, she Never just looked Never smiled so sad. in the video or so the pictures that we had. We referred so. to her Little Miss So Sad. So she said, you're not gonna believe it. We have her file. excited to see Lucy for the first time. I think that's that's going to be the highlight even more than being on top of a, a, a great historical monument like this. I can only imagine that it's going to be a surprise that I will always remember and something that I'll always look back on and be like wow I was I was there I I still remember the first time that I held her or the first time that I saw her or the first time that I maybe even see her smile, hopefully. Um, the first time that I can really connect with her. We're gonna have nothing but joy in our hearts when we see her, but what we're most concerned about in our prayer would be that, um, that she would have this peace, you know, when we first bring her into our arms. She did have such a sad little face, and we still haven't really seen a smile out of her at all. So to see that first smile is gonna be Oh, that's going to be the biggest joy, I think, for Kim and I. Adoption Day provided Kathy and me a unique opportunity as filmmakers. Not only could we film Zimmerman's getting ready for this big day, we got permission to film Lucy saying goodbye to her foster family. Over the months, we were able to develop a relationship with Rihanna at the Xi'an Orphanage via email. She graciously allowed us this opportunity to capture this glimpse into Lucy's life. Kathy stayed with the Zimmermans, and I headed for the orphanage. Okay. Oh my. You look adorable. My goodness gracious. One of my uh, favorite pictures, you know, it goes all the way back to that original video. Was, uh, you know, Lucy waving and her foster mom is just looking at her. And so you can tell and throughout that original video that she really did love her, you know? And uh, I think she just, she loved children so much. And so that's, that's really neat that um, Lucy could have someone like that to take care of her and love her. So. Um, She's given us a gift in loving yeah, her. Yeah, that picture I just love because it's, it's on the back, it's on my computer screen. It's been on my desktop for you know, since, since we've known about her, and uh, so um, I just love that. As a foster mom myself, I can imagine she might be having a countdown opposite of my countdown. My countdown is an excited hours to go until I get her. But her foster mom's is probably 
not like that as it's going to be life-changing for her too so there's so many aspects of this um, and they're not all happy even though the big picture is extremely happy um, there's losses that are part of adoption and um, it's just part of what adoption is so in trying to envision what it's like on Lucy's side when she gets up and she's getting dressed and getting ready to go for the last time, leaving all the people that love her and her world, so to speak, to come to um, people she has no idea about. Um, that's a little bit of a hard feeling for, for me if I think too long or too hard on that. Um, but again, trusting that in time, um, she'll grasp the bigger picture but she's about to lose everything that she knows. And I think while she is losing everything she's known, everything she's comfortable with, I do think she's gaining so, so much. And sure. I think even though she can't grasp that right now, I think she's just like the new people that are going to love her is just beyond anything that she can, she can even grasp. This adoption isn't always necessarily just about Lucy for us. It's, it's about how much Lucy has changed us and changed me. I'm a different person because of adopting her. So uh, Lucy's life isn't the only one that got changed through this for the better. My life has been changed for the better because of it. And uh, I think that's what everybody has to realize. They think they're sacrificing so much um, when they give or when they step out in faith to do something like this. They don't, they don't see the bigger picture in the end of how much they're gonna get from it and how much their life is gonna be changed for the better. We have two African American boys and that heritage is going to be a part of our family and now the Chinese heritage is going to be a part of our family. It's just it's just who we are. They are now Americans and they are Zimmermans and that's a part of what they've adopted in this whole process, you know. We've adopted them in, in mm. their culture. They are adopting our family and our culture. And so um, it goes both ways, I think. I can't imagine that all of us wouldn't be the better for it. Oh, 
真漂亮！你要哪个？他在后头，马上就到。嗯，马上就到。哈哈哈哈哈！哦 ，I know you're scared. I know you're scared. It's okay. Oh, honey. Oh, it's okay. Oh, she's trying so hard to be brave. Mm. Oh, honey. Oh, I don't want you to be scared. Oh, I need. Oh, I need. I'm trying. Say I'm trying to be brave. We hear some negative things in the adoption community these days, you know, and that we have a savior complex, you know, that adoptive parents are just, you know, it's all about being uh, the savior to these children. And um, boy, it is so much not about that for, for us, you know. Yes, we want to help a child and we want to love a child, but we want her here, not just because we want to save her from something right. like that else. We want to be a part of her life and we want her to change us and, and that's happened. Um, I, I don't know that I would have recognized that right at the beginning, you know, um, but you know, I certainly recognize it now because my whole worldview has changed, you know. Through this adoption. Through this adoption. The Zimmerman spent the next couple of days as a family getting to know Lucy away from our cameras. And sure enough, they found out she does have quite a smile. We had made plans to return to the orphanage three days after the adoption so that Merle and Kim could meet Lucy's foster mom and thank her for blessing Lucy with such wonderful care. Lucy traveled with us, but stayed in the play area with Emily so she wouldn't have to experience another goodbye. Uh, they just have a phoenix and dragon. Uh, we believe it's uh, a luck for the, the child. And here have her date of birth. Her date of birth is engraved. Yes. One we will keep in her file. The mm. other one you keep for her. Yes. So we believe oh. these have connections. Oh. So one day she come back, the, yes. the other one in her file and this one match. will be match. Oh, oh that is really? just thank beautiful. You so much. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Here she goes. She's coming. Come on. 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 在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那玩了。哦，哦，她想看她那个姐姐在那 Thank you so much. No, no, no. Thank you so much, Shay Shay, for taking care of her. Just love 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 her. See, tell her China and the United States heart, heart, and a thread, a red thread connect. He said he brought her this. Look, you see, Chinese power. This is China's map. This is the map of China. This is the map of China. This is the map of China. So I'm going to give this to her, and I have one at home. He said he brought this to her, and he has one. All the children in her care go to school or preschool during the day. She takes care of her foster children, all of them with special needs, during lunchtime and after school, and cares for them until school the following morning. This one. Now it's empty. The government provides housing to families willing to care for the children right on the orphanage campus. You had four, now you have three. This creates a warm family environment for the children to be raised in, 
maximizing their ability to bond later on with their adoptive family. We feel so blessed to have her. Very blessed, very, very blessed. She wants all the good people like you to come to adopt our child. And then tell her that next month we will take her to the best orthopedic doctor to, to take a look at her leg to see if there's anything we can do to help her. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for taking it. It was care obvious that Lucy had been loved and will continue to be not only by the Zimmermans, but by her foster family as well. After this emotionally charged but beautiful exchange, it was time to go. Is my mascara running? <laughs> Is Absolutely. it? Is it? Kathy, what do I look like? <laughs> yes. I will actually have to try to have someone write in Chinese to her what? Yeah. When I first saw Rihanna earlier in the week, she asked if we could make another advocacy video like we did for Lucy Kim. She was surprised with how quickly Lucy found a family and wanted to now help a girl who was close to aging out of adoption, which happens to be at age 14. She's uh, always a happy girl, and uh, she likes to go outside, play with other children together. Because uh, maybe after one, after one or one and a half year, her age is uh, out for adoption. Every time when I come with uh, the adoption family, she always asks me uh, when I can be adopted. So I just feel someone can help her. So please, if you can give her a family. As Kim and I listened, our hearts ached for this sweet young girl. We determined that we would do everything we could to help our Emily, as we called her, find a forever family. This marked the end of our time with the Zimmermans, and soon we were on a plane flying home. We hoped what we had captured would do justice to the beautiful story that was unfolding in front of us. A few days after we returned home, we created a short advocacy film for Emily, and we put it up on our Facebook page for our documentary. The response was unbelievable. It was just like wildfire. I mean, people sharing it, people telling each other about it. Uh, people that had never thought about adopting before were starting to think about adopting. People that were on the fence about adopting were deciding to adopt, not just from China, but from Bulgaria, from other countries. I mean, even stories now people telling us about the effect that video had. And the reason it had such a huge effect is because by the end of that first week, there was 12,000 people that viewed that video. People from all over the adoption community shared this video, and within about a week, 90 people had expressed interest in Emily. For Mike, this was a catalyst for him to move forward with his nonprofit, Find Me International, with a special focus on orphan advocacy. I started to realize that there seemed to be something really solid here, I mean, something that worked. And I realized the ability to make this into an organization, something that was solid, something that would be a nonprofit organization that others could be a part of, whether through donation or volunteering or whatever, because the amount of joy that we were getting out of it was just incredible, you know, knowing how we could change lives in such a practical way of giving a child a family. As we were supporting Mike with his new organization, we also continued with the film project. If you remember, it was our intent to travel with the Lesures as they returned to China to visit Haley's orphanage and also her finding place. But the scope of our story expanded when they decided to adopt another child from China whose name is Caleb. We caught up with them at one of their fundraisers. We decided to, uh, just about a year ago, start to go through this adoption process after it had been a little over a year. We came across Caleb's picture. We knew that uh, God was speaking to us and, and telling us that this was, this was the one for us. So we uh, jumped in again, and uh, it's been a wild ride, but we're uh, we're here and uh, we're really excited. So. There you go. Thank you very, very much. much. We really Good appreciate luck. it. Yep. Thank you very much.
city of Xi'an became a regular character in our story. It's a beautiful place in many ways where the ancient meets the modern. There are lots of people everywhere and it started to feel a bit like home. It's the ancient capital of the Han Dynasty and its name means Western Peace. Our first order of business after a night to rest and recover was to go to Haley's finding place. There is so much emotion that has been going through me today as we're as we're going. We're actually going to be making a poster and this little ad here um, talks about her finding place and it says that she was found 30 meters east of a telecommunications bureau in Wugong County. So that's where we're going and we are really hoping that um, we can find a place to hang a poster that we're making and this poster is going to have her picture as a baby as well as the ad and then a picture of her now and um, a picture of our family and it's going to just explain that she has been um, adopted into uh, an American family and that she's happy and she's loved and our hope and prayer is that her birth mom is able to actually see this and know that she's doing okay. So we're just really anxious to get there and see see what it's like. Uh, and it's this, okay. So we're sure it's this one then. And, and if we stand here, where's 30 meters? Across the street. So how far do you think this is? God, we thank you for opening the door for us to be able to come to this place today and I pray that you would just allow her birth mom to be able to see this and to know that she's okay and that she's loved and taken care of. God, we know you make all things possible and we leave this here today believing that she will be able to see this. In your name we pray, amen. amen. It was definitely something beautiful that I feel we got to experience and, and be able to find and to go to. And as hard as it was, I am thankful that we got to go and do that. If you recall from the beginning of the story, it was the Greens' intent to adopt two children from China, Callie, who we've already seen, and Connor, who they were very anxious to adopt next. As it happened, they were in China to get Connor at the same time as the Lesseurs, and without our coordinating, we're staying in a hotel right across the street from them. The Greens and Lesseurs got to sit down together to share adoption tales. We've had that chance to have children by birth and adoption because it's such a miraculous experience both ways and so wonderful. Plus, the Greens were also able to take a few hours and help Find Me International advocate for Cameron, a teenager from the Xi'an Orphanage who was about to age out of adoption. The next day was Sunday, Easter Sunday, Caleb's adoption day. But before we went to the Civil Affairs Office, we made a short visit to Haley's Orphanage. The orphanage directors met us outside and brought us in, they welcomed us in and had us come into this room. And the director then uh, let us uh, ask any questions we wanted and told us that we were welcomed and they were glad that we were there. So we walked into the area where Haley grew up for those two and a half years and it was two smaller rooms. And when we walked into the room, all the nannies came over and greeted us with smiles and we brought a photo album that had pictures of Haley now and with us, her family, and with her brothers. And then I pulled out my phone and pulled up a picture of her when she was there. And they all said, Yu Ching, Yu Ching, and they said her name. And they were all very excited to, to see her face and then looked at the album that I had given them. And they were just so excited to see how she had grown. And it was great to see how the children interacted with the nannies and how they just seemed so comfortable with them. And you could tell that the nannies really cared for the babies. From there, we then walked back into the room where Haley had slept. And the one nanny said, uh, I think 
this is where she slept. And she took us over and it looked like the same crib that was in a picture that we had been given. So we went over and we stood there for a moment and I think both of us got a little bit choked up just thinking of her sleeping there. The first, first two, and, two and a half years of her life, um, just where she, she slept every single night and cried and wanted that family. That was just something that was overwhelming to me when I was there. And One of the nannies says, are you think she always took her clothes off? <laughs> and we started laughing because that's exactly what she would always do when she first came home. She'd go to sleep and take her clothes off. <laughs> so we knew that this, this nanny really knew who she was and um, had memories of her. So she definitely left an impression, apparently. <laughs> because uh, Haley, our daughter, was um, a lot younger. She was two and a half, and Caleb is seven. So not knowing what his reaction is going to be to us is a little bit more nerve-wracking, not knowing if he's wanting a family yet or understands what that means to have a family. With Haley, she bonded to Jen quickly, and it took a little bit longer for her to warm up to, to me. This time around, I kind of look at it as maybe a second chance to some degree to have a, a quicker connection because it did take a long, it took probably a good year and a half or so before she was truly warmed up to me. So that's what I'm kind of looking forward to today, a new start, of another chance at bonding with him quickly. So. I had such a, you know, nervousness in me before we were, were going there. And so we walked into the room and he was already there. We found out he was already there before we even walked in. Um, and I thought, oh boy, here we go. I don't know what he's gonna do. I was picturing him, you know, going to scream and cry and have this reaction. And then he started smiling a little bit. And then Nate moved over and started doing the same. And then, uh, he invited them to get down onto the floor and they started pushing these cars around back and forth on the floor and he was laughing and carrying on. Jumping around, chasing the cars, yeah. it, was, it was really neat. And all of a sudden pulls out this deck of cards <laughs> that are in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> whips them down on the on the floor. Says, <laughs> I think you cheated and gave me the ball. Fun, and I think he's gonna give us a run for our money. As it turns out, they had nothing to worry about. There was still one last thing we wanted to try to capture before I flew home. Jen was able to get some sketchy information about Caleb's finding place. So before I left, Jen and I traveled out to this remote village outside of Xi'an to see if we could find this location. We weren't even expecting to be able to go. It was one of those things where we went you know, as we were going over to China, I thought, I hope I get to see it. I really hope I get to see it. I remember getting into the van and just feeling very nervous because I didn't know what to expect. And it was a little bit of a drive there, about an hour and a half. And, and we started to drive into the, the little town. It was just kind of older looking buildings and most of them, the doors were just like 
plywood and um, we pulled up to where they thought uh, this uh, finding place was, his, this address. And we stopped and um, our guide got out of the car and she saw someone walking up and started asking him questions. And, and so then she came back over to the van and said, okay, this is, this is it. They no longer live here. They actually moved up the road, but this is where he would have been um, left by his family. I remember just feeling so completely overwhelmed looking at this old rundown building and this door that was just made of like old plywood and a little latch. And it, to me, seeing where they decided to leave him showed that they cared for him because they knew that it was a foster family that lived in that building. So to me, that just shows that they wanted him to be safe and they wanted him to be secure. And so we got back into the van and she said, well, do you want to go and see if we can find this family? I've been told that they're up the road. And I said, of course, yes, yes, I want to go. So we started heading up the road and they were only a couple blocks up. And we pulled up and this woman walks out and she walks over to the van and our, our guide turns around and she goes, wait here. So we, we stayed in the, in the van and I see her talking back and forth and I see the woman keep pointing back to the, the building. So I knew we were at the right place. I could tell just by how they were talking, but I didn't know what they were saying. And our guide then turned around and she opened the door and she said, she said, you can't go in, but you can um, come out and say hello. And as soon as she opened the door, the, this woman looks at me and she says, she, she, mama, she, she, mama. And she, she gets very choked up and she puts her hand on her heart and, and she looks at me and, and you could just see the emotion just, um, just welling up inside of her. And she, um, she said to me, she said, I'm a Christian. And I looked at her and I said, me too. And I put my hand on my heart and both of us just started to cry. And she and I just hugged outside of her house there for quite a while just crying and so at that point because she knew that about me she decided to let us come in and so she said you come in you come in so we so we went into her house and as we walked in there was her family members she had other sisters and she had um, I guess it must have been her nieces and um, we got to meet all of them. I took out uh, Caleb's picture that was on my phone and I was showing them uh, his picture and they were going, oh, they were so excited to see his little face and just so excited that we were there. I then asked if I could see where he slept. And again, she kind of paused for a moment and thought, and, and she said it's, she said it was very dirty and hadn't been cleaned in a long time. So I said, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to see, I want to see. And so she said, okay, I'll, I'll take you to see. So we go up these steps and um, we went around this, this railing, this upper railing and into a room that was where the children slept. And there was maybe 10 little tiny beds in there and she said that they had had 34 children that slept in this room and I just remember looking at all these teeny tiny beds thinking how they just must have been just on top of each other trying to sleep in here but this woman just you could tell she cared so greatly for these children she just loved them absolutely loved them and she showed us where he slept she showed us his little bed and she remembered right where he slept and so I would just remember staring at that little tiny bed and, and she told me at that moment that she would pray over the children. And she remembers praying for each one of them. And she started to get very emotional and was crying about these children. And, and at, at one point, um, due to some different circumstances, the children all had to go into um, a, a government-run orphanage. and. When they did, she had just such a hard time sending these children off. And she was just very emotional talking about it and crying, talking about having to, you know, release these children and how much she just loved and cared for them. And she talked again about how she would just pray for the children, that God would protect them and keep them safe. 
And that's when I took her hands and I said, and God is answering your prayers because Caleb now has a family who's gonna teach him about God, who's gonna show him who God is. And with that, again, she just started to sob and we hugged and I could just see this woman's heart. She was just so genuine and just truly cared over these children. And to see that she had been praying for my son before I even knew he was my son and that God had answered her prayers was just incredible. So then we walked into this other little room. Then she sees in the, in the corner, she goes, oh, that's she, she's Walker. And it was his, it was his little tiny walker. And she told us that when he came to her, that because of his physical condition, he actually couldn't uh, walk. And she taught him to walk with this little walker. She actually taught him to walk and she said that she would massage his legs every night. And to think that she cared that much with all those children to take the time for him, to care for him that much, and just to show him love. Um, it was just very moving. I asked our guide, I said, can you ask her if I can pray with her? I said, I know we won't be able to understand each other. And so she, she relayed this to this foster mom and she wholeheartedly agreed. And we both clasped hands and um, I prayed in English and she prayed in Mandarin. It was such an incredible thing. It was just it, to see the power of God in the whole situation from beginning to end. And to just see, you know, I, I feel like this little boy is gonna make such a difference in the world and to be able to be a part of that um, and for God to call our family to be a part of that is just completely overwhelming. God bless your family too. I know he will. Amen. In the morning when the sun splashes on your face There's a smile in your eyes and it feels like a warm embrace I think back to the days when you first looked in my eyes It's a cold and lonely place But when you put your hand in mine Oh, I knew Oh, I knew I would never be the same Oh, I knew Oh, I knew Yours would be an empty place Just like the one I love Who needed a home 
She sings herself to sleep Praying God if you dare Could you tell my family To bring me home Would you fly across the waves Just to find me just to find her Just to find him yeah. Would you fly across the waves Just to find her To find the one you know Was meant for you Yeah.